Hey, I'm Eric Estep, the pastor of Village Church, and I want to tell you thank you so much for uh, joining us once again for worship today. Uh, I'm really excited about today. Today is Palm Sunday, and so our focus today is going to be on the cross and what it means to us as we are moving towards the resurrection. And so in just a, in just a few moments, we are blessed to have James Ballou, who is our worship pastor at Village Church He's going to be leading us in song along with Krista Boss, who is also a part of Village Church, but she and her husband have moved to Scotland in order to be missionaries, but because of with what's going on, she is back in town for the, uh, just for the meantime, and so we're just grateful for her that she's going to be singing with us today, blessing, her, or blessing us with her voice as uh, they're going to be singing some songs today uh, about the cross and what the cross means to us. But before we get started, I want to I want to do a couple things. One, I want to share just something really I think really exciting. To, at least it is to me uh, that I'd like to share with you, and then I would like to open us up in a word of prayer. Uh, but first of all, I want you to know that that next Sunday is Easter Sunday, and we want to invite you to come to a drive-in worship service. So we're gonna get in our cars. We're gonna celebrate Easter together in our cars at the farm at Ridgeway. And so you're going to be able to listen to the message through your radio. Uh, that will be at 1030 next Sunday. You can go to our website at blythewoodvillage.com, and we'll have some details for you there about what that's going to involve, what the schedule's going to be. So we're really excited about that. Uh, so I wanted to share that with you, but now I'd just like to take this time. I'd want to, want to open us up in a word of prayer. Pray that God will uh, speak to your heart today as we are going to be focusing in on the sacrifice of Jesus. So why don't you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I am grateful uh, for this day that you've given us. And Lord, as we are, are really just sort of figuring out things as we, really as we go along, God, I want to thank you for your, for your grace. I want to thank you for your mercy. Uh, Father, you have, you, have used, you have used video for us as a church to minister to people. Uh, Lord, we've seen, we've seen someone come to know you as Lord and Savior through this streaming. And so, God, we thank you for that. Uh, but, Jesus, I pray that today that you will speak into our hearts. Uh, God, that you will begin this week, starting today, to turn our eyes towards the cross of Jesus and the next week towards the resurrection of Jesus. It is the greatest event in all of human history. And so, Lord, we rejoice in that. We thank you for that. We thank you for your goodness to us. But may you bless our time of worship today. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome? lost but he brought me and know oh, his love for me oh his love for me has ransomed me, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me, who the Son sets free.
Krista, thank you uh, for blessing us with your with your music, and so that was uh, it's always just encouraging, and it fits right in, of course, today with what we're going to be talking about. If you have your Bible, why don't you take your Bible? I'd love for you to join with me in reading. So, if you're as you're at home, uh, we're going to be looking today in Isaiah chapter fifty three. We're going to look in two verses today, verses four and five. But before we get started, um, I'll ask you this: if if you were yeah, you know, just a few weeks ago, if I were to ask you what is what is the most important thing or one of the one of the things that you really think that you need in your life right now, what do you think you would have said? And I, I was thinking about that, and I thought about what I would have said uh, three weeks ago. Here's what I would have said: because spring is coming, we we've, we've moved into a, a, a new place where we have a lot more grass than we used to have, and so three weeks ago I would have said the one of the most important things that I can have is a zero turn mower. Uh, because right now I mow our backyard with a push mower, and it is absolutely exhausting. Uh, now, some of you, uh, I know that some of you have you have kids that are going into college. Some of you say, what I need more than anything else three weeks ago, more money. And there is no doubt that more money is something that is a necessity when you have a kid going to college. Uh, others of you say, I, hey, I'd like to have a, a new car. I need a new car. I need a, a new place to live. And the list can go on and on. All those things would be would be pretty normal. Uh, but now three weeks later, I can tell you I, what most people are going to say that we need more than anything else. It's a vaccine. Uh, we, need, you know, we need a shot that's going to work for this virus so that we can move on from it, so that we can get on with our lives, so that we don't have to live in fear anymore. And as I, as I thought about that, I began to think that well, we're just sort of in the same place right now with, with what we need spiritually more than anything else. What we need spiritually more than anything else is a cure 
from the greatest virus that there is that's known to man, and it is the virus of sin. In Romans 3.23, we are told that we are all infected, so to speak, with this virus. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And there, there's great consequences that come with this virus. I mean, Romans 6.23 says, and the wages of sin is death. And so the big question is, well, is there a cure for this virus? You know, is there, is there anything that can help us in this universal plight that we all face? And, you know, this week is a special week for us because as Christians, we are entering into, it's a holy week. And what we are going to learn today as we look into our scripture and what many of us already know but we need to be reminded of is that the hope that we have for the cure from the virus of sin is Jesus. Jesus is the vaccine that will cure us from the consequences or from the, the pain and the power of sin. And so that's why today we are going to look in Isaiah chapter 53. We're going to look in verses 4 and 5. And what we're going to discover is that God has a vaccine available for you and for me today. Now, now the background of this text is Isaiah wrote this book, of course, and the Isra Israelites were in Babylonian captivity at this time. Uh, you might remember Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had come into Jerusalem, and what he did is he tore down the, he tore down the temple. He took the people that were in Jerusalem, sent them into captivity. Now the question is, why, why did that happen? Why did God allow that to happen? Well, there's another prophet named Jeremiah who, who wrote about it. He, he mentioned why it happened. In Jeremiah 25, verses 4 through 9, I'm not going to read all of these verses, but listen to what Jeremiah said. This is before the captivity. It says, he said, And though the Lord persistently sent you all his servants, the prophets, he said, You've neither listened nor inclined your ears to hear what they said. They said, turn now every one of you from your evil way and wicked doings and you will remain upon the land that the Lord has given to you and your ancestors from of old and forever. He says, do not go after other gods. So he says these things and then he, he says this. He says, and yet you did not listen to me, says the Lord. And so you have promote, provoked me to anger with the work of your hands to your own harm. And so he said, and I'm going to send Nebuchadnezzar. So the reason why they were facing these hardships is because they, they were disobedient to God. And yet that's, that's our nature. Our nature is to be, a, it's to be rebellious. Uh, our nature is to do what we want to, want to do and not to do what God wants us to do. That's sin. And so the result of that is that, that we get in trouble. And sin enters into our lives, and it's a virus. And so the good news, though, is that Jesus has come, and he went to the cross in order to be a vaccine, so to speak, for you from the power of sin. So, so, so what has he done? Well, let's look at some ways that, that Jesus is a vaccine for us. And Isaiah, which was written 700 years before the birth of Jesus, he is prophesying about, about this coming Messiah. And, and here's what we see. If you look with me in verse number four, and it speaks of Jesus in this way. It says, yet he himself bore our sicknesses and he carried our pains. But we in turn regarded him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. Now there has been a lot of talk about vaccines over, you know, I'd say the last couple of months because we're looking for one with, with this COVID virus. And so I, I looked up what, what a vaccine is, and I, I know in general what it is, but, but I, I read what, more specifically what it is. A, a vaccine, it contains the same germ that causes a particular disease that you're getting vaccinated for. For example, a, a measles vaccine contains the virus of measles. Um, now, the, the, the virus that's being injected in you, it's one, it's either dead or it's a very weakened virus. But what it does, once it goes into your body, it causes your body to react to it. And your body creates antibodies that, that whenever it's attacked by that virus again, that will be basically immune from it. So that's why vaccines are so important. You know, they're not just medicines that are given to, 
to, to get you over an illness to make you feel better. They're actually given to you in order to prevent the illness in the first place. And so I thought that was interesting. And, and then I look into our text, and it says Jesus entered into our world. And if you look back in verse 4, it says he bore our sicknesses and he carried our pains. So in other words, he joined with us into our world in order to take part in our suffering. And so, in a, in a sense, what I see is that if Jesus is going to vaccinate us from the disease of sin, he had to expose himself into our sinful world in order to be able to help us. You see, whenever sin came into our world, it infected everything in our world. It infected you, me, all of creation. Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in this way, death, it spread to all men, because all sinned. So from the very beginning, starting with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, you know, they sort of kicked off disobedience to God. And, and because of that, it's been, it's been running through our DNA ever since. It's, it separates us from God. So Jesus entered into our world that's full of suffering in order to bridge the gap that stands between God and man. So Jesus entered, entered into our world. He took on the form of man to identify with us. And so the question is, why would he do that? Well, it comes down to something rather simple that I think we would all agree with, and that is it's because God loves people. And we're told all throughout Scripture, God loves people. He loves creation. Therefore, Jesus was willing to enter into our world that is full of brokenness and sickness because he wants to cure us from the power of sin. I mean, look at verse number 4 says he was willing to bear our sicknesses and to carry our pains. See, he wants to be a vaccine for us from sin. And see, Jesus, he came in and he, he experienced, experienced suffering so that when we place our trust in him, that his power over sin will be transferred over to us. He identified with us in order to cure us. You know, there's something very powerful whenever you know that someone has experienced the same things that you have. Because you know that they know what, they, they, they know what you're talking about. They know what you feel. Well, that's Jesus. You know, Jesus knows what you feel. He knows what it means to, to love. He knows what it means to have joy. He knows what it means to hurt. He knows what it means to mourn. He knows what it means to be betrayed. You know, Hebrews 2, 14 through 18 says, Now since the children have flesh and blood in common, Jesus also shared in these, so that through his death he might destroy the one holding the power of death, that is the devil. Why? So that he could free those who were held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. When I know somebody's been through what I've been through and come out on the other side, well, it, it draws me to them, and I want to know somebody like that. Well, that's what Jesus has done for us. We're always drawn to those who've shared our experiences. Uh, this past December, we had about uh, 40 people from our church who went, who went to Israel. So we were, there in, we were there in December, and because it was December, at the end of December, it was during a time of the college football playoffs. And so as we were over in Israel, right when we first got there, you know, we had a lot of people in our church who are, who are Clemson fans. So, they, you know, they're wearing their Clemson gear. And I, you know, I was like, well, I guess they just want everybody in Israel to know they love Clemson. So we get over there. Everybody's all excited about the game. But the, one of the first places we went to was Caesarea Maritime. Now, it's right there on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. It's a place where the Apostle Paul uh, was held as a prisoner. But when we got there, there was other tour groups that were there before us, but there were some of the people that were there, they were also wearing Clemson shirts. And so they were excited. So it's funny, when our people saw them, some of our people immediately, they, they're drawn to those people, those Clemson shirts, and they, they go over to them and, hey, you're going to watch the game, what do you think, who do you think is going to win, you think we have a chance this year? But, the, but they were drawn to each other because of shared experiences, because they rooted for the same team. Well, that's, that's what Jesus says for us. We're drawn to him because... Because of this verse, verse number four. He shared in our experiences because he wanted to take our suffering and our hurt and he wanted to give us freedom from it. So when I look into our scripture, I see Jesus is a vaccine for us and, and, and he became a vaccine starting off with this. 
he joined with us in our suffering. But here's another way that I see Jesus being a vaccine for us, and that is that he bears the brunt of our sin. Look in verse 5. It says, but he was pierced because of our transgressions, and he was crushed because of our iniquities. Punishment for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds. Now, sin is not a real popular topic. We don't like to talk about sin. Because if, if we actually talk about sin, then we are admitting something. We are admitting that there, there are things that are right, and there are things that are wrong. And, and we don't, in general, we don't want to do that. We want instead to say, well, let's just be you know, tolerant of each other. We want to be nice, which is, it's a good thing to be nice. But I think really the underlying thing is we want to live the way we want to live. And so if I say, well, that might be right for you, but it's not for me, or it might be right for me, but it's not for you, then I don't, I don't have to worry about, you know, about the consequences of what I'm doing because everything is okay. But when I look in the Bible, that's, that's not how Scripture approaches it. You know, the Bible lets us know this. If you choose to live in sin, then there are consequences that come with that. Now, we need to know, if, first of all, what, what is sin? Well, sin is anything that falls outside of the bounds of God's command and direction and leadership as given to us in Scripture. You know, the word sin itself, is, it's a really interesting word. It means to miss the mark. It's, a, it's an archery term. It's a, it's a picture of somebody shooting an arrow at a target, and they miss it. Now, you can miss that target by a little bit, or you can miss it by a whole lot. A miss is still a miss. And God wants us to hit the target, because if we don't hit the target, then we are outside of the grace and the blessings of God and it will lead to suffering. Sin always leads to suffering. Leads to being separated from God. But here's the good news. God loves you. He loves me. And because he loves us, he sent his son into our world eventually to make his way to the cross so that he could pay for our debt of sin in our place. You see, we, we can't pay that debt of sin on our own. It, it's just a sin that is way too big for us. You know, we, we can't overcome the penalty of sin. You know, only Jesus has enough righteousness in his account to be able to pay off that debt that we owe. So that, that's why verse number uh, 5 lets us know, or verse 4, what, what, what Jesus did for us. He he was willing to go to the cross in order to be pierced for our transgressions, and it says, and crushed for our iniquities. So Jesus came in order to bridge the gap that stands between you and me and God because of sin. And he bridged that gap by laying down his life on the cross. I, I can give you a, somewhat of an example of this in in May of 1946, there was a science experiment that took place in Los Alamos. A young scientist had two spheres, hemispheres of uranium that were going to go together. And before the chain reaction, he would take a screwdriver and he'd stick it between the two hemispheres and separate them. And it was just an experiment before they were going to test the atomic bomb in the South Pacific. He'd done this experiment numerous times. He had other scientists in the room with him. But as the two hemispheres began to come together, he took that screwdriver and he stuck it in there to separate the hemispheres, but it slipped. And, and the hemispheres were coming together, and there was a blue haze that immediately went up in the room. And he knew that the chain reaction was going to, was going to happen. It was going to kill everybody in that room. And so he reached in with his bare hands, and he separated those hemispheres. And he saved everybody in that room except for himself. See, he, ex he exposed himself to the brunt of that radiation that eventually took his life only days later. That is what Jesus did for you and me on the cross. He stepped in and he took the brunt of sin, the brunt of the penalty of sin, for you and for me so that we wouldn't have to experience it. Now, that's what 2 
2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us. It says, he made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So Jesus stepped into our world to vaccinate us from the power of sin. And the way he did that was he joined with us in our suffering. He took the brunt of sin upon himself. And then here's the last thing that I see. It became a vaccine for us in that he made us immune to the power of sin. Verse 5 again, but he was pierced because of our transgression, crushed because of our iniquities, and punishment for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds. You know, after the, the last couple of weeks, I feel like that I've sort of become like an expert in medicine. Uh, you just watch the news, and I've, I've learned a, a lot by listening to the news about hydroxychloroquine, and uh, azithromycin. Uh, here's what I've learned. I've learned if you take those two drugs and you put them together, then for many patients with this virus, with COVID, that it's helping them recover a lot quicker. Now, I'm sure that you already knew that unless you've been living in a cave for the last couple of weeks. But because of the news, it's all, because of all that news out there about these drugs, there has been a rush to get these two drugs into hospitals. And I thought about that, and I thought, you know, if there's a rush to get these drugs because it will help us with our health, don't you think there ought to be a rush for people to get a hold of Jesus because he is the cure for the greatest virus that's out there, the virus of sin? You know, Jesus gave it himself as a sacrifice so that we could experience victory. You know, we're told in Hebrews 9, 12 through 15, it says, Jesus entered the most holy place once for all, not by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. That's what he did at the cross. He shed his blood for us, having obtained eternal redemption. For with the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a young cow, sprinkling those who are defiled, sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of the Messiah, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to serve the living God. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who were called might receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Jesus has performed the act of sacrifice for us. So here's the big question. Have you applied it to your life? You say, well, how do I do that? Well, we do it by entrusting our lives to Jesus. We, we place our trust and our hope in Jesus for what he did for us on the cross. You, you remember how the Hebrew people survived the plague of Egypt, the last plague? Uh, the Lord told them what they were to do is they were to sacrifice a lamb, and they were to take its blood, and they're to wipe it over the doorpost of their homes. So that whenever, so whenever the angel of death came, if he saw the blood of the lamb covering their home, he would pass over. You might remember that John the Baptist, in the book of John, in John chapter 1, he called Jesus the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now how did he do that? Well, he gave his life and shed his blood for us. And so the same, the same idea is at play here. Whenever we entrust our lives to Jesus, he applies his blood, the payment of his blood sacrifice to our lives so that whenever God comes to judge sin, he will look at your life and my life and he will see that we are covered by the blood sacrifice of Jesus and he will move on so that we will not have to pay the penalty of sin. That's what I love about our scripture today. Jesus is the vaccine for the plague of sin. He became our vaccine by joining with us in suffering, by bearing the brunt of our sin on that cross, and then finally by making us immune to the power of sin. Now, question, another question is this. Are, are you as desperate for immunity from sin as you are from this virus that we're facing today. Because I can tell you right now, 
that being immune from the virus of sin is something that will not just give you health for a little while, it will secure your life for an eternity. Would you like that? You know, to have your life safely in the hands of God? If you would, I, I just want you to do this with me. Why don't we just, let's just bow our heads and pray. And you can join with me in prayer. And some of you might say, you know what, I, I, need, I need the immunity of Jesus. I need to be rescued from sin. And so if that's you, where you are, right there in your home, you can just pray this. You can just simply pray, Dear Jesus, I want to give you thanks for taking my place on the cross. Jesus, I'm entrusting my life to you. I am believing that you died for me. And because you paid for my sins, Lord, I am asking for you to forgive me of those sins. And I will place my faith in you. I will follow you and call on you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I I, I would just like for you, please take your phone. Take your phone out. We want to know about this. Take your phone out and you can text us this. Text fear not 94090 and there will be a form there for you to fill out. You fill that form out and that will enable us just to get you some information uh, in the mail about how you can begin a, a walk with Jesus. Now, for others of you as believers, I want you to take this time today to do something as well. I want you to take the time to pray and to reflect on the cross and to tell Jesus, say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for being willing to give your life up for mine. Think about what he's done for you. And remember, he loves you. And he has come that you might be free. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful Palm Sunday.